All right, so we're recording. Welcome everyone to TAM Lab number 31. Uh, today I'm going to be going through the process of upgrading a vSphere environment to six from 6.5 to 6.7. The, the title here is a little misleading because it says VCSA, meaning just one, but I've actually changed it so it's going to be two PSCs and two vCenters to simulate my customer environment because they're going to be going through this and I thought, well, why not just leverage this opportunity to presented on a TAM lab. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, real quick from an agenda, I'll quickly go through the lab, show you guys what, what my lab looks like, and then uh, we're going to start off upgrading the PSCs first uh, in order of PSC1, PSC2. Once those are done, normally I would do one vCenter at a time, but I think I'm just going to kick them off uh, both off at the same time just for the sake of time here. All right, that's all I got for PowerPoint. So let's jump into the lab here real quick. So let me give you a quick overview. So this is my, my main lab here, you know, physical, these are physical hosts. Uh, within it, I've set up a small uh, nested environment. So I have, let me go to the folder view here. I have two ESX hosts. I have two external PSCs or platform services controllers, and I have two vCenters. And if we look at, this is kind of an, an ugly little diagram, but you can see the two PSCs are, are in the same PSC domain. So they're synchronizing with each other. They are on version, all of this is version 6.5 update two right now, which means that there's still the concept of having a site within a PSC domain. So they're in the same site at this point. I believe that went away with 6.7. There's no concept of site anymore. Um, and then I have a vCenter, vCenter 1, vCenter 2 connected to each of those PSCs respectively. I don't have a third party load balancer in front of these PSCs like you would potentially see in, in a customer environment, uh, like an F5 or something like that. So that's what it looks like. If we log into that one of those vCenters here, so VCO1, you can see, I can see VCO2 and there's one host within each vCenter just, just to say, you know, for the sake of having some VMs running, which are just, there's nothing running in these VMs, right? So that's the overview of the environment. Any questions before we start moving forward? All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to RDP to, I have uh, four Windows servers in my main environment and I'm going to, leverage those to actually do the install or the upgrade. So I've attached the 6.7 ISO for vCenter to each of those VMs. And that's just where I'm gonna be doing the, uh, the install slash upgrade here. So I'm gonna start with SQL 1. If you look here, I've mounted the ISO for VCSA 6.7. Here it is. I'm gonna go into the UI installer. And I'm gonna start with those, those PSCs, right? So that's what I'm gonna do first. Um, to get this done in one hour, because it's two PSCs and two vCenters, I'm going to start the process on all four of these VMs. So I'm gonna start upgrading PSC1, PSC2, VC01, and VC02 all at the same time, because the first step is it's going to deploy a new uh, virtual machine for each of those components. So that's going to take some time. Uh, I'm going to let it deploy those those new appliances, and then I won't actually start the the process of migrating from the old uh, VM to the new until I'm ready to do it. But it should help save some time here. So, so if you mount that ISO, go into VCSA UI installer. I'm just going to be doing the the GUI based one. I'm not going to do the CLI here. Go into the Win32, scroll down to installer. And we're going to click that. And then you get a couple options here. I'm going to be doing an upgrade. So I'll click next. First step is it's going to be deploying a new PSC, right? So it wants to know the source appliance. So I'm going to start with PSC01. Connect to source. It's going to want credentials here. So the root appliance password, and then it wants to know 
which host or vCenter is currently managing this appliance. And it needs to know that because during the migration process, it actually shuts down the source VM. Copy that. Next, accept the cert warning. Uh, it's giving us a warning here that the external PSC is deprecated uh, after 6.7. So there's a KB here, but the first step is to get to 6.7 and then we can use the converge utility or the converge tool to bring that PSC internal. So this is gonna be the first step either way. So now it wants to know where do you want to apply, uh, deploy the new appliance? It's gonna be the same vCenter for me. Another cert warning. All right, and where do you want this appliance to go? I'm putting it in my upgrade lab folder. And which cluster? Put it in my prod cluster. What what do you want the name to be? So ideally you'd want it the same as the existing one, but you can't do that, right? So I'm gonna call it PSC01 and then six seven. And then once we're completed here in like a week, I would shut down the original, uh, remove it from inventory, wait another week or so, delete it, and then probably rename the VM to make it what I actually want it, right? So just so I have something in case I need to fall back. Put it on my vSAN data store. And now we're gonna put in the, the temporary IP address. So you need a temporary because you need to have both appliances up and running while it copies over the, the data from the original to the new one. So I have here temporary, so 656. Oops. Okay. Click next and review and we're gonna go finish. So now it's gonna actually deploy that appliance. And I wanna do the same thing for the other three components, the PSCO2 and then the VCO1 and VCO2. So let me go to DCO1. Again, I've mapped or I've connected that ISO to all of these systems. This is just to make it as fast as I possibly can here. So that's why I said this lab is gonna be kind of a little bit of boring while we wait for this stuff to go through. So if, if anyone has any comments, feel free to speak up. Hey Steve, this is Calvin. So essentially, as you know, VMware changed the direction as you know, we prefer a customer not to use an external PSC if they could build the bundle PSC and vCenter in one appliances. Yep. Which I am super excited about because for a while there, our design was extremely complex. I remember in the 5.x days we had, we had the web client could be separate. We had a database. We had yeah, a vCenter. We had update manager. It was like five components. It was just super complex. Yeah, when you update them and uh, apply the certificate, oh, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, uh, we 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 gone a long way. Exactly. We've we've come full circle at this point, which I feel like this is a much better way to go. Let's keep it simple. At any point during this, the upgrade process from like an old version to a new version, does it change, or is it? Um, deploying different hardware, virtual hardware requirements. Have we upgrade up the procs or up the RAM or change the disk size or does it make those changes? Or uh, those changes? For the PSCs, I think it keeps it the same, which is, I want to say two vCPUs and four gigs of memory. Um, when you deploy the vCSA, it will actually ask you, do you want it tiny, large, extra large? So, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll start with what you had, um, but you have the ability to change it on the fly. 
So you'll see that here when I get to the vCenter one. Okay. All right, IP57. Okay, next, finish. And it's gonna start deploying that one. Let's do the V the vCenters here. Hey Steve, was there a workbook or worksheet that you've come across that catalogs all of the existing uh, infrastructure uh, version numbers so that as you're going through this, you have an easy way to check all of that and oh, you know, this is update two and you're going to update three or you're going from update three to, you know, the, the base release, you know, you're going to get five steps in and then this isn't going to work type of thing. Do you know of any resource like that? Um, kind of. And that's a great question because if you read the release notes, which I happen to have here handy for the latest version of vCenter, you go Ooh, to it reads those. Upgrade notes. Um, it says right here, upgrade migrations from vCenter server 6.5 update 3, which is our latest version, to this version of 6.7 is not supported, which is why I'm doing 6.5 update 2 and why I just emailed my customer, what build are you on? Because we may need to wait until a newer version of 6.7 comes out, right? So so yeah, it's, it's definitely something you need to think about. Um, what I found which is a really good resource is if you have access to Skyline Viewer and your customer's running Skyline, oh, I'll, sure. bring up, I'll bring up my customer. I think 6.7 U3 supports the path you're on, no? I don't think so. Because this is the latest version of 6.7. It came out yesterday. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, yeah U3 time. dropped yesterday. Oh, gotcha. Right, Look at that, Steve's a day late and a dollar short. I know, right? Give me a break. So here's my customer. Of course, this is an internal only uh, TAM lab, so we definitely can't share this. But if you look at inventory, here is their two V centers, which I know I'm actually missing a couple, but it shows the build, which is perfect, right? It doesn't show the PSCs that are external, but those should be the same version as the V center, right? In theory, they, they can be different, but not a best practice. So. And I'm sure, and I'm sure a number of us have hit the <laughs> DNS reverse lookup not being there. That's always exciting. Oh yeah, that's always a fun one. All right, what am I doing? I need to think before I click OK here. So uh, that's the source, yes. And I'm connecting to this. Yeah, I know. Okay, where are we deploying? Next. Okay, we're gonna put it in here. In our prod cluster. This one will be VC0167. with those passwords. Uh, so here you go. You can choose the size, you know, if it, it's a perfect opportunity if their infrastructure has grown and it was a, it was a medium and now you want it to be, you know, large. So sure. it's kind of a, a nice way to kind of upgrade that on the fly as well. Actually, can you click on back? Can you click on back where you get the, yeah, if you look right there, they tell you the number of hosts and the number of the VM if you pick on the size. So a lot of time I go with the customer and then kind of give like a two, one or two year uh, growth for them. So they pick the right size to make sure it's uh, accommodate. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of nice that these are very different. It's not like if you have 100 VMs, choose tiny. If you have 200 VMs, go small because it's it's not that much difference, right? But if it's a large difference like it is, it, it helps. All right, so let's look here. I am doing 58. I 
I, I'm typing so fast. It's be a miracle if this works because I'm sure I've made a mistake so far. <laughs> I hope you guys are keeping me in check. All right. That one's deploying, and then we'll do the other vCenter last here. This is my Plex server. And of course, I would have taken backups of all these components before I did any of this, right? And fifty-nine. All right. So they're all deploying new appliances. If we go back to SQL, which is where we started, that one's finished. So if we look at vCenter, I now have all these appliances deployed, right? PSC0167, PSC0267, VC0167, and this one's still going. So now I'm gonna kick off the PSC01 deployment or migration, I guess. And the PSCs you really do wanna do one at a time, right? So it's gonna ask for credentials. Everything's good. It's going to run a little pre-check here, which may take a moment. So while that pre-check's running, Steve, what do you see as the availability concerns doing this upgrade? Um, obviously, we've got two VCs, two PSCs, and so on. Uh, would this still be something that you see happening after hours, only doing one side of it on day one doing the second side on day two type of thing. What, what do you see as the best practices there? Um, I think when you do the PSCs, you may not even see any downtime. Uh, you may not be able to log in during that process to a virtual center, to a vCenter. Uh, but if you're already logged in, chances are you're probably still going to be okay and functional. Um, I would still schedule a, a change window or an outage for, for that piece as well. Um, the V centers maybe take a half hour each. So it, it's a pretty quick process. I mean, we'll, you'll see it here. We're going to do all, all this hopefully within the hour here. And as it's doing these, I'll be poking around in V center to see, you know, is it up? Is it down? Am I able to do stuff or not? So, Right, and I'm also thinking about uh, other applications, whether they're VMware or third party, 
that leverage vCenter APIs. So whether it's a high churn VDI environment or you've got a third party backup solution, there's probably a whole bunch of things that you know need to go into that um, that planning to make sure that you're not going to end up with a thousand backup errors because all of a sudden you couldn't log into vCenter uh, via third party backup utility. Or if you've got a recompose happening in a VDI environment, that all of a sudden your pools are toast because uh, vCenter wasn't available. Yeah, for sure. I mean, those are great examples. You got VRA, um, whatever else is connecting into vCenter, right? I mean, for a lot of customers, vCenter is now like a tier one application because of all the integrations you may have with other products. So it definitely, you definitely needed a downtime for it, an outage. But if all goes well, it's, it's a very short window, hopefully. And the cool thing is, like right now, it's, it's doing stuff, right? But the, the original source has, nothing's been done yet. So it's still up and running. Once it shuts it down, which you'll see, that's when your actual outage will start, right? So it shuts down the source. It's going to configure the network on the new, so it assumes the IP and all that. And then it's gotta con do some configuration and, and do some additional data copy. But it's pretty quick. And, and that's why it's a nice, uh, it's a nice process because it's, it's very easy to fail back if something goes bad. All you got to do is shut down the new one, turn back on the old one, and you're back up and running. So, uh, I'm very interested to see when we get to that point in, um, or to identify when we get to that point, if there's a way that basically you can sit there and functionally pause and make sure that everything's okay, that, you know, go check and make sure there aren't a bunch of operations happening and then, you know, kind of look in both ways before you cross the street. And once you're sure you, you hit go. Yeah. I think there may even be. No, I think it's on the vCenter at that point. Once, once it's at this point, it's, it's going, you know, there's no pause functionality. Yeah, that's correct. I got three of my customers who recently did an upgrade on the vCenter, their environment. Um, what we did is we opened a proactive ticket, which is kind of helpful because three of them, they're running to different issue, just minor, but got to get a VMware GSS support involved in. Uh, yeah, so I would suggest if you're going to do that, coordinate with your customer, specifically on the chain control, just get a like, time slot open a little bit longer, just in case something go wrong, because we did with my customer. Proactive is like a default. You got to do that for these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And and, again, and as mentioned, you know, you've got VRA, you may have Horizon, you may have a number of other things that are, be realized in general that are talking to that old um, vCenter that's now got to be repointed. Yeah, so I have my customer who also have VDI and VMware best practices. When you run VDI, get it run on its own separate vCenter separate from your infrastructure one. So yeah. with my customer, the game plan is to first upgrade the in vCenter, you know, to the latest version, then the vSphere, and then after that, Horizon. So we have a game plan, you know, how to tackle everything. But yeah, it's it's a lot of step, and yeah, a lot of step rely on vCenter. And you were mentioning on the uh, view composer server. Yeah, we stopped composing new desktop pool. So the one that are using, they are okay, except the new one. Yeah, there's actually a KB out there that talks about just upgrading your vSphere or a general VMware environment. And it shows exactly do this first, do this, do this, you know. Oh. Uh, it's, it's very helpful. And I can find that for you. So you can see now we dropped, started dropping pings at ICMP sequence 191 and it picked back up at 288. So the new one now, if we look at vCenter, oops is uh, has assumed that ip right and there was a, a question in the the q a so uh, stephen williams do to do the rename dns needs to be touched yes no actually um the dns does not have to be touched at all so it, it will assume the ip and it will assume the mac address as well i believe it does it take over the mac address or does it just do a gratuitous ARP? 
Uh, I think it take out the IP, but the uh, new ARP. Uh, yeah, I don't new think ARP. Yeah, Mac. Okay, so at this point, the old is shut down, the new one is still configuring and basically still starting up, but you can see I'm logged into that first vCenter, which is connected to that PSC, and I'm still able to click around here. Let me see if I can power off a VM. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the little pop-up window confirming that, so there's, I would just assume part of the PSC upgrade is also going to be, you know, you're going to you're going to have some impacts as well. But luckily, the PSCs are relatively quick. The V centers take a little bit longer because it has to copy a lot more data. What would you recommend in scenarios? I'm I'm actually talking with a client this afternoon that's got, um, like I think they it's either seven or eight V centers, and they want to use this upgrade opportunity to collapse them or to minimize how many V centers they've got. So you're talking about migrating clusters from one V center to another, right? Yeah. Are they in enhanced link mode today? Yeah. Then you should be able to do cross V center V motion. Um, the, the easiest way would probably be have, I mean, this requires that they've got the hardware, but have just a new cluster in the V center that they want to consolidate to, and then you would just migrate those VMs over. But you may just be able to take one host out at a time, you know what I mean, and kind of move them over that way. But you may have to worry about things like metadata, like tags and things. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting question. Lots of planning would need to be involved there because if they're leveraging tags for things like backups and things. You definitely don't want to lose that. Okay, so this finally popped up, by the way. So, so it looks like we're back in business here. Yeah, because overall capacity requirements and, and a siloed mentality still drives some clients to stand up kind of more V centers than are necessary, mm -hmm. which makes the long-term management plan a little bit more challenging. So whenever there's an upgrade opportunity like this, they're uh, considering, you know, what, what would be the impact or this, the steps to get rid of some of the existing V centers. Would it be better to move the clusters first and basically have some empty ones and don't even, you know, don't even touch them? Or do you still go through the upgrade process on all the V centers and then drop them afterwards? Mm. I, I don't know which way would actually be better. Because if you could get rid of some of them ahead of time, then it's less upgrading you have to do, but that depends on the other vCenters handling the load. Right. What I would probably do, uh, and I, I definitely want to think about it further before I say, yes, do this, but what I'm thinking is if you've got the capacity in one of those current clusters where you can take one host out and create a new cluster on the other vCenter, that will give you the opportunity to then to start moving VMs from the original cluster to the new cluster via cross vCenter vMotion. And since they're in the same PSC domain, all the tags should, should follow through, right? Because that all lives on the PSC, the, the tags, the licensing, the certificates, global permissions, all that stuff, right? So you'll, you'll retain all that. And then you'll then have the opportunity to start moving VMs over and it's just as you fill up the, the host on the, on the target side, then you can do the same thing, take another host out, add it over to the other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that would work. And that would be pretty painless. Uh, the everything- We'll also add in on that, that, uh, that gives you the opportunity when you build the new vCenter, yeah. that you can size it appropriately for the higher density clusters. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Because all of our all of our higher limits have all gone up, so having fewer V centers seems like a real strategic thing. You know, as I was thinking about that, what about clients that have got um, V ROPs that are currently you know pointed at the existing V centers as a data collector, you know, to gather V ROPs data? I would presume that a new version of V center has new metrics or additional metrics. Is it automatically going to know? Or do I, I think register re-register it 
No, I, th I want to say that VROPS is now smart enough to understand cross vCenter vMotion when it doesn't see the VM as a new VM with, with a new GUID and all that. I, th I thought I saw that over a year ago that it now understands that and it's not going to see it as a brand new object. But I, I want to confirm that. Yeah. Well, and because in some ways you would want it to, to ask, otherwise it may not gather new metrics. I don't know how that communicate. I don't know how that query works. Is it send me everything or send me these specific point, you know, data points? Oh, it grabs everything. So and I mean, it's new data points because this is a new version of vCenter that didn't exist previously. So you're saying you've got vROPS. It's collecting against both vCenters today. Well, I, I, it was more in question. It just in general. Say vROPS is running and it's connecting to a six five, and it's gathering all the data from six five. When that goes to six seven, is VROPS you know going to start getting new numbers, new metrics, meaning additional? Like yes. we've, got, we've added more counters. Yep, it will. And uh, so like, at that point in time, your VROPS should actually show, hey, there's some new numbers in here that weren't here a minute ago. Yes, it will. Okay, so uh, you have to do it. Just knows to do that. It it absolutely just knows. Yeah, like for instance, with six five we did not have, and maybe we do now with the newer versions of 6.5, but there's, there's a new property for any new VM that says VM creation date, which is awesome. I've been waiting for that for years, right? So you can see when the VM was created and you'll start capturing that with 6.7. And I think that requires VROP 7.5 as well. Okay. But yeah, that's a good example. So it, like prior to the upgrade, if you look in VROPS, you just would see no data for that, right? And then going right. forward, you would start seeing it. So the, the first PSC finished. Uh, I left this message up here uh, talking about TLS. So the 6.7, oops, let me double check this. Yeah, okay, so that's moving forward. So with 6.7, we've disabled TLS 1 and 1.0, or 1.0 and 1.1. Um, out of the box. So if you need to turn those back on, there's a utility to do that. Otherwise, it finished. It's all good. So we can close SQL 1. And I've kicked it off on DC01 to now do the second PSC, which it's doing its thing. As soon as this is finished, I'm going to do both vCenters at the same time, and maybe we'll, we'll be able to finish before 11 o'clock here, but we'll see. So uh, I don't know who was talking there, but re regarding the um, collapsing vCenters. Oh yeah, that's me, that's Mark. Oh, hey Mark, sorry. Um, yeah, no problems. So you should be able to just right click and migrate. Let's do both. So it's in, it's in VCO2. I want to move it to VCO1 on that host. And that may be because, it shouldn't be because of that. There must be some other requirement that I don't have in place. That's fine. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. But I mean, in theory, it should be that simple. You just move them from one to one V center to the other. My concern is if, let's say you were collapsing these two and this cluster here, you wanted to move to this vCenter. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't keep VMs running on this host, disconnect it from vCenter and reattach it over here because you'll lose that metadata. You know what I mean? You'll lose the tags, you'll lose the folders. So I would evacuate this host, put it in maintenance mode, disconnect it from vCenter, reattach it to this vCenter in a new cluster yeah, and then, and then migrate the VMs that way. That way, it'll retain all that stuff. Sure. And and that stuff is pretty important. So. Okay, so this one's shutting down. This is the other one. And the upgrade that you're going through right now is this is the base six seven. No U one two, or are you going straight to a U version? I'm going straight to six, seven. It was the latest, at least I thought it was yesterday. Let me see. I've attached 
six seven U two C. U two C. Okay. Which is yeah, this these update or these release notes, which is uh, from July sixteenth. Right. So yeah, if there's a newer one, then maybe this upgrade concern right here is not a problem, right? From six five U three because I'm on six five U two. And by the way, yes. if you Google VMware build numbers, there's a KB. This one right here for all of our products. So let's say vCenter, if you click on that, this is the gospel for correlating build numbers to uh, actual versions. So very easy to find. That's helpful. Excellent. Bookmarking that. There's also a really good YouTube video. It was a V Brown bag session from, I want to say Nigel. Nigel Hickey, uh, it's probably over a year old at this point, but he talks all about the new versions of six or the new features in six, seven and upgrade considerations from six, five. Uh, so he talks about actually reading the release notes, uh, making sure you have a backup, checking the compatibility matrix with all your other ancillary products, you know, all that stuff. It's a really good V Brown bag session. So if you just, uh, go to YouTube and search for, well, heck, I can do it right now. Uh, now we'll go here. I think it is vCenter, vSphere, 6.5 to 6.7. Let's see what do you brown bag? Got this one right here, Nigel Hickey. If you manage a team, you have to try and mic it up. And of course, you got to watch some commercials design. first. But yeah, this is the one. It, it's pretty good. So that's a little over a year old. And pretty much everything he talks about is still true, other than some new caveats with the newer versions. Nacho also published a blog from VMware, kind of talk with, walk to the whole step as well, too. Yeah. Oh, the other really good resource is vSphereCentral.vmware.com. Hey, this is one of our micro sites. No Wix site. What's that? Oh, commercial caught me. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I swear, every YouTube video now has mm -hmm. commercials everywhere. It drives me crazy. Um, but yeah, this vSphere Central. This is what they call one of our micro sites. So there's one for like vRealize. Uh, vSAN has one. I think it's storagehub.vmware.com. Anyway. It's storage hub. That's correct. Yeah. Really good, really good site. So if you're talking about vSphere upgrade, uh, mm. all kinds of really good documentation around, you know, walkthroughs and everything. It'll, it'll walk you through step by step. Um, some of the things you need to do after the upgrade, like then you want to do VM tools, you want to do the hardware version, you want to do the distributed switch, all that stuff, right? And this is public, right? I can share that. Yeah, totally public. Yeah, I send this to my customer as well because they have a lot of product and kind of give them a, a screenshot step-by-step step what they need to do or doing the stuff before they actually doing it in the production. So they have screenshot everything here. Yeah, the other one, Storage Hub talks about uh, vSAN talks about vVols, just VMFS in general, SRM. That's a really good one. And then the other one I know of is Re vRealize, I believe. And I think that's all managed by the uh, techn technical marketing folks. These are all really great resources. They have got a lot of documentation around design considerations. The, the vSAN one is great for my customers doing a vSAN Robo build. So they've got, you know, network designs. Here's how you want to do the, the explicit failover of the 10 gig links that are between the two nodes. It, it's a really great resource. So goes out. All right, this is almost done. And then I'm going to start both vCenters. Uh, 
Oh, it looks like it's letting me do it. Oh. Or maybe not. It might be because I have to do it from the source to the destination. I'm logged into VC01, so let me try. Okay, well, let's finish. So click close, click close. So the PSCs are done at this point. We've got 15 minutes to do two V centers. <laughs> so let's do that real quick. Start you with, can do it. I don't know. That's not a lot of time, but we'll we'll see how far we can get. It may go a little bit over. But I appreciate that uh, enthusiasm. Uh, let me start this pre-upgrade check here too, because that's the part that takes a little bit of time. So the next step here, it's going to ask me um, how much data I want to copy. Do I want to take like all the historical performance charts and things like that as well? which you'll see here in a sec. I'm not going to do that just for the sake of time. It'll, it'll pare down a little bit how much data we're copying over. But I would in a production environment just because that's valuable to have. And it, it's only going to add a few more minutes, which we don't have here today, unfortunately. Hey, Steve, as you mentioned, um, I told my customer to be aware that once they upgrade the vCenter, uh, vSphere, they also would need to upgrade the VMware tool as well. Yep. Uh, it's critical because a lot of time they might not aware of it, um, forgot about it. I mean, the thing is upgrading the VMware tool is disrupted, right? VMware tool and VMware hardware. But I told them VMware tool is more critical than VMware hardware. So those require a reboot. So of course it's going to be downtime. So just, you know, let your customer be aware of that downtime as well. Yeah. Uh, let me come back to that real quick in a sec here. So here, by the way, they're going to talk about um, stuff that's not going to be migrated over in regards to ESX 5.5 and update manager, which we don't really care about here, but it's just saying the host upgrade baselines and patches and stuff won't, won't be carried over. Um, here's where you have the opportunity to choose how much historical data you want. I'm not going to take any just because we don't have time for that. And then, yes, I've backed up my vCenter, which I haven't actually, but Let's just pretend I did. Get out of jail free card. Yeah, exactly. Well, we told you. Um, and you clicked it. I did. And it's recorded. <laughs> 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 All right. So those two are blasting out updates. Uh, yes. So, Calvin, back to your question or, or point, I guess, around VMware tools and hardware. I think the newer versions of tools actually do not require a reboot um, in general. That may not always be the case, but... Uh, I think newer versions after 10.x does not require a reboot. Yeah, that 10.1.13 or whatever. Something like that. That, that freeze version. But definitely the hardware upgrade will. Uh, and it's something Nigel talks about in that YouTube video, wherever that is. Um, he warns us to be a little bit more careful with the hardware version because it's essentially the same process of yanking out a motherboard and putting in a new one, right? It's, it's the virtual hardware. So you may not want to do that. It's not as critical as the VMware tools, for instance, because hmm. tools has drivers and stuff like that, that it's going to leverage. And you definitely want to do the tools before you do the hardware version, because the tools is going to have the drivers for that new hardware. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I wouldn't tell customers, oh my gosh, you're not on the latest hardware version. You got to do that. That I feel like that's introducing more risk. Um, and keep in mind, when you go to that newer hardware version, you can't go back to an older version of ESX or, or one that doesn't support that. Hmm. That one I, I'm a little bit more lenient on, I guess. Yeah, and also for the hardware, essentially, let's just say whatever hardware version they're running, they only need a new one if they're trying to run like the latest window 2019 or something. If they don't, they can keep what they have right now because essentially they're going to like rebuild the environment or rebuild the VM. But just to be cautious of that. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, if you look, if it's still up here, it might still be up, RV centers. So, oh no, I have it over here. So 
these vCenters that I've deployed, 6.7, these are brand new, latest version. Look at the compatibility, it's version 10, because we want that flexibility to say, you might install this on an older version of ESX where you're trying to upgrade, right? So that's not that critical, if you ask me. I mean, you certainly don't want to be on something that's 3.x, maybe. Um, and then keep in mind some of the appliances that come from third-party vendors or even VMware may, you may not want to upgrade that because now you're impacting a purpose-built appliance, right? Okay. Hmm. Uh, and then the other thing everyone always seems to forget is if you've got virtual distributed switches, which this isn't the vCenters we're doing, but right, there's upgrade here. On the, on the VDS itself. So it'll show which version you're at. And after an upgrade like this from 6.5 to 6.7, there's typically a, a newer version of VDS as well. Not always, but you may want to upgrade that as well. Oh, that's another thing Nigel talks about in the video is before you do all this, he says, make sure you back up your vCenters, of course, but also back up your VDSs. So right click, go to settings, export configuration. That's just a good best practice in case things go bad. Okay. So we've got just over eight minutes. It's gonna be tight, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, I can stay on a few minutes after 10 or 11 o'clock if, if anyone wants to hang out and see the success. Like I said, I would not do multiple vCenters at once in a production environment. Um, you know, you just want to focus on one at a time in case something goes bad. But they shouldn't impact one another. The PSCs, you definitely do want to do one at a time. All right, so the first one, the VM is being shut down. And now the second one. And sure enough, they're going down. They'll be shut down here in a sec. Yeah, there they go. Okay, so then let's just assume these upgrades finish. Everything's good. Now, if you look in your vSphere inventory, you've got this old shutdown system. What I would do, and it might even do it for you, is if you right click, go to edit settings, disconnect the NIC on that thing, because if it does get powered on, I don't know what would happen. It, it may not be good because it thinks it's the primary vCenter, but there's other, this other vCenter, right? So disconnect it, the NIC, or maybe even remove it from inventory altogether. I wouldn't delete it completely yet, just in case, but you know, put it on your calendar that, you know, at some point you probably want to delete those officially. And then what I would do is rename these, these new VMs to drop the, the six, seven, or make it whatever name you want, right? So the new vCenter 01 now has that IP config and we're pinging. That wasn't a whole lot of pings at all. 45, yeah, about, about 100 pings. So once this is all completed, um, I would give it a, a week or two to let the dust settle. And then at that point, start planning with my customer to then collapse these PSCs, make them embedded. And that's with the, uh, the converge tool. 
which we have a TAM lab recorded from quite a while ago at this point. If anyone's interested in seeing that process, I've never done it myself, but I'm going to have to do it here at some point with my customer. So yeah, I'd be very interested in that. Yeah. If you just check out the TAM lab website, which I think, yeah, right here, go to past sessions over here. Uh, you can filter cause I know it was Brian that did it. Brian Wickner. I think it was his first one. Yeah. Right here. vCenter converge converge tool. So you can click that zoom recording and, and watch that one on demand. Yeah. In my customer, I have to open a service case for that. It's kind of convoluted cause a lot of step. I mean, it's a lot. And with my customer, especially with the vCenter upgrade, that timeline is not very limited. Right. So that's why we don't have a luxury to do this you know, as long as we can. Right. So it's actually starting services and we've got four minutes left. We might actually pull this off. I don't know. But technically we didn't start this TAM lab till like three after. So I'm going to say we've got seven minutes left. <laughs> And in fact, as it's starting some of these last minute processes, well, Postgres needs to start obviously, but, but then it'll do things like performance charts and things like that. And it may even be available at that point. So yes, this is probably yeah, down. And if you notice, if you look at vCenter, so the new 6.7, the, the VMs themselves, Photon OS, right? If you look at oh. the old 6.5, I thought it was still Photon, but it wasn't. Wasn't it Photon in 6.5 or was it still SUSE? I'm not sure, but we didn't have it marked properly. If, if it was Photon, it, it just showed other, other 3X Linux. Any other questions for the last couple of minutes here? Any other thoughts, comments, concerns? Nope, just great job. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. I mean, like I said, this is something I'm going to be doing with my customer in the next couple of weeks. So I said, well, hey, let me do it in my lab and we can run through it together. And I'm like, well, why not schedule it for this week? I've got nothing on TAN Lab, so. Is that video that you referred to on the SharePoint site, is that fun with platform services controllers? Is that the lab? No, but I haven't watched that one yet either. That was Bill, and I think that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. The one you want is TAM Lab number six. That was a while ago. Okay. Yeah, but Bill did some interesting stuff. Was that two, three weeks ago, a couple weeks ago? It was two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, uh, end, end of July. Yeah. Uh, where he did things where he basically like repointed to a new PSC. And oh, this, yeah, this actually, he fun. does cover that. He'll converge from an external to an embedded. So yeah, both of those would be good to watch. Okay. Uh, I need to go back and watch that one. So it's starting the vCenter service now. And then once this step two is completed or not even completed, but like 90%, I think you can log in while it still does step three here where it's actually copying over some of the old data and things like that. But that, that step doesn't take very long. So we should be able to see it complete.
Is similarly the uh, the Skyline collector then automatic? I mean, it, there's nothing you have to do to that if it was pre previously deployed. Yeah, there shouldn't be anything you have to do to that. I mean, assuming your credentials are the same, okay. should be fine. And the latest version of the the Skyline collector actually has an auto upgrade feature, so that thing will keep itself upgraded uh, all the time, which is nice. Excellent. Let's see if it's up yet. Uh, we got our splash screen here. Let's try HTML5. Still not up. Pretty close though. Somehow VCO two is a little bit further ahead than VCO one at this point. I don't know how that's possible. Oh no, never mind. Well, we're about two after the hour. Um, like I said, I'll stay on. It shouldn't take more than a couple minutes here to finish these two. But if those, those of you that need to drop, feel free to drop. Uh, I'll stay on. I think we're just about done. And then you'll be point posting this one within the next couple of days? Yeah, I'll probably have it posted by tonight. Great. Oh, there is one other thing I'll mention here is once it completes here, you're going to get a little, not warning, but just a note saying, if you're using auto deploy, you need to update your TFTP and DHCP servers. So I'll show you that here when it, when it finishes, but looks like it's thinking. Anybody have customers using auto deploy? All right, well then you shouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, I have one customer that long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interestingly with my customer, there was upgrading from, I have three customers, one doing uh, both from uh, vCenter appliances, and one of them came from window <laughs> over to vCSA. Uh -huh. So <laughs> that was an additional step they need to go as well, to take as well. Yeah, you're right. They're, I think they got to install an agent or something like that. Um, I had a customer that did it from six to six, five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a step for that. Yeah, because the update manager is all separate. Yeah, uh -huh. essentially on the new VCSA, uh, uh, integrate it with the update manager and then all they have to do is configure the proxy and what images, what to download and all that stuff. So kind right. of new policy and new everything. Yeah. All right, so 
VCO one is up. Even though it's still working on that third step, like I said. So it's it's importing some of that inventory service data. Hmm. And hopefully we see both vCenters, which we do. And complaining about my temporary licenses, but everything looks good, right? And you can see we are on 6.7. So let me try migrating one of these VMs from VCO1. Where's migrate? Oh, there it is. Maybe that's the problem is I needed it to be on that source vCenter. No, there's still something up with that. It may be, I don't know. I have to look at the requirements for cross vCenter vMotion, but we should be able to do that. Oh, that's cool. If you didn't know where it was, hmm. uh, that must be new. Anyway, yeah, uh, I think we're good. This should be almost done and then We'll see the, the little note about auto deploy. And we'll be finished. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Yep, you bet. Thanks for joining. Uh, again, if you guys need to drop, no worries. Uh, I'll, I'll stay on so this can complete and then I'll upload the video later today. Are you going to stop the recording? Yeah. Oh, uh, I want these to finish. They shouldn't be taking too much longer. Cool. Just, just thought we'd capture the uh, the finished result here. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I knew this was going to be kind of not boring, but just a lot of time where we're just sitting here waiting for it to do its thing. And so I appreciate everyone speaking up and having some lively discussion. And come on, almost there. There it is. So here's the warning about updating auto deploy with the DHCP and TFTP settings. And then also the other little warning around uh, TLS. So if you needed those older TLS 1.0 or 1.1, you can configure that via the uh, reconfigurator tool here. So otherwise that was successful and that was successful. So with that, I will stop recording and thanks everyone for joining.